Save the King! Hello and welcome back to Pod Save the King. I'm your host, Anne Gripper. I am joined by my good friend, Russell Myers, Daily Mirror Royal Editor, who is back from his holiday. The Royals are on their holiday, but we thought we'd just have one last pod before we take our own little summer break. Final dalliance. <laughs> well, not a final dalliance. <laughs> final dalliance until next time, Russell. And there's, you know, there's been some bits and pieces pieces going on. I mean, I don't know how much you've been following while you've been away on your oh, you know, holiday. Oh, never, never a day yourself. off. Never a day off, no. <laughs> It's, it is very difficult to get away from it all. I guess to a certain extent, that's what Meghan and Harry were talking about. You can't get away from the mobile phones and the social media and all of that. And lots going on at home in the UK as well. And we have to talk about the Olympics a bit. So all sorts of bits and pieces. Oh, and what William's up to next with his homelessness project. So uh, a few little bits to go through before we embark on our little summer break. We'll be back in September, but... Um, it's interesting to see Meghan and Harry. I mean, we'd, we'd heard, uh, I think, probably last week that they were going to be visiting Colombia as their sort of latest not royal tour. We need a new word for it. There's not royal I tour. Don't like quasi royal royal no, tour. Nobody really knows what that means. I, mean, I don't think I know. Faux so royal means. tour. Also not cool. Come on, Is listeners. It, I mean, help us out. We need a new name for this. It's not even. It's just a, you know, just a a tour, isn't it? It's a just visit. A, a visit. Yeah. It's Holiday. Just, yeah. No. It's a holiday. I mean, working, working holiday, perhaps. I mean, you get to see the sights of Colombia. It's one. It's definitely on my bucket list. Colombia. Um, I've not been to Nigeria. I missed out when they, when the king went to Nigeria in 2018. We were just coming back from the Harry and Meghan sort of superstar tour of Australia and Fiji and Tonga and New, and New Zealand when that we were feels a long time ago my gosh that was sort of that was my first year in the job and it was all you know gosh look at this amazing couple they're going to set the world light and there was a lot of um there was a lot of goodwill I think surrounding them at the time and then of course the rest is history isn't it but um listen I, I think they're damned if they do damned if they don't I say this a lot but they are going to have to explore different avenues and, and, and why would they go to perhaps the traditional countries of um of the royal family who go to certain places at the behest of the government whether they're commonwealth nations or whether they're um like of course um William and Kate was supposed to go to Italy this year was that this year must have been i think it was i think it was around <laughs> march oh yes been. yeah it was knocked out by kate's um okay. treatment obviously yeah, yeah. so th- of course that they they have had to reschedule that and perhaps that will happen in the in the coming years i'm sure um they would they would still love to go to rome um, but it, but that again is is at the behest of the government. It's in conjunction with um, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, and the, and the palace is working hand in hand. And so, it's that that is a royal tour because it is got the mechanism of government behind them. But then, yeah, I can understand why certain people say that there is a royal tour element to the the to the Sussexes jaunts because they are being invited by the governments of the uh, of the host nation of course they were invited by um, the Nigerian government and they have been invited officially by the vice president of Colombia to um, where are they going they're going to Bogota they're going to Cali um, and it's all going to be about, um, of, of course, you know, the, the sort of box ticking exercises that you would imagine there physics um take hold there are going to be lots of women's empowerment there's going to be lots of um kids and youth programs to be visited you can't call that box ticking russell well this it's, is I mean, their it's, passion project yeah but i i'm talking when you plan if you're going to plan a tour for them you, okay. you tap into their strengths and their passion projects it wasn't it, i wasn't being, being facetious i was saying purely for the planning and logistical elements you're going to have to um play to their strength the themes so, yes. the themes you're likely to see them cover and then from the fashion themes we would also expect to see some local designers and wear some things that you've been given and and such like as we did also see on that Nigeria visit but yeah like you say I think it is interesting getting to see some of these other places or having a spotlight put on these other places in a different way than compared to where the royals might be going apparently uh, well so they say that William is just glad that they haven't rocked up in Paris at the Olympics where they would have stolen the show but you know well, uh, yeah, again, there was um, there was some uh, something I read that this tour is being planned for November. 
give you a bit of exclusive. It's not. And I, there was a, a bit of umming and ahhing whether that would potentially overshadow the back end of um, the King's, uh, the King Queen's trip down under to Australia and Samoa. Of course, Prince William will probably be going around that sort of time, November time, to uh, to Cape Town for the latest instalment of Earthshot. But it's actually happening in a matter of days. <laughs> so, you know, watch this space because it's going to be um, in the sort of summertime where not a lot of things happen for the royal calendar i mean they're all going to be up in scotland the king is there at the moment william and kate are uh, are with the kids for for several weeks so that possibly gives them a bit more of an opportunity to not be accused of opportunism or you know uh the sort of point scoring that has has gone on in the past because it, that doesn't benefit anyone does it we don't want to go Bal- balmoral anyway we're off to columbia so no i fine. mean I, I was very jealous when my other friends went to balmoral at the, at the weekend and it was beautiful weather i saw some of her pictures on instagram and what, one of those little tour stunning. situations she did fun. go on the, the, the tours yeah she's very fortunate very nice um so megan and harry they've also been on the telly again they have, yeah. I mean, again, there was a lot of, sort of um, speculation as to what they would be discussing. Would they be launching grenades from across the pond at the royal family? But there was none of that. It was very much centred um, about the work in, uh, in inverted commas. I mean, listen, it's going to be poured over, isn't it? I thought it was a bit of unfair commentary about um, Meghan's hand on Harry's knee and the sort of the sort of theatre of That's that. That's what they do. It's what they do. And, you know, me- Megan probably can't help herself a lot of times because she's very used to the aspect of it not being a very relaxed situation, that she is an actress and she feels as though she has does have to present herself. With Harry is a bit more um, unpolished, shall we say, because he, he did an interview with um, ITV News recently. He was talking about um, his crusade against the certain sections of the, of the media and his uh, various lawsuits with... Um, news organisations in the British government, and he he just he just chats really, he just talks about whatever. And I don't think there's much forethought as to what he's going to say, what he, what the message needs to be. It's still very very raw for him when he's speaking about certain subjects. Whereas Megan, it does seem quite planned, and I don't I didn't think that. And the lady's name is it Jane Jane Pauley. I Jane Pauley, yes, Jane Jane Pauley. When she she I mean, the, the theatre, again, of it was that she'd ambushed them with this question about the fact that um, Megan would not want to be asked about her uh, previous comments uh, about taking her own life. I would imagine that they would have... through the the content of the interview before because it wasn't you know a jeremy paxman-esque sit down it was very much structured towards the 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 case of this is what you're going to speak about and these um these topics would have been signed off i I can't believe that that was a question that came from the left field 
when even if it was it shouldn't have done because that's the point of having people who brief you and if you are talking about yeah, yeah. if you're talking about a project which is about online harm people who've lost their children some of whom to um it was two quite different examples mm. or sort of types of examples actually there were the ones that you kind of expect with people whose children had taken their own lives because of their sort of their experience on or influenced at least by their experience online and fears of online bullying but then you also had a couple of instances where the children had accessed some form of drugs or medication mm. from mm. online and and that had been what had caused them to lose their lives so it's two quite different spaces it's I and mean, it's an interesting it's an interesting project it's very worthy and i can you know you can see that it's um a bringing together a community of parents who don't really you know they they don't want to have that shared thing but they clearly well, they're they're brought, clearly they're brought do, together and it's from their incredible grief and absolute trauma from the event and their willingness to not have this to happen to, to any other child or for any other family to, to go through that. And it's very laudable that they've thrown themselves into that public space because it can be very, very traumatic. And I suppose when you when you have partners like Harry and Meghan and the the attention that they can bring to certain causes, then... The argument would be, well, why, well, why wouldn't you partner with them? And I think that when um, Harry and Meghan have, have faced certain criticism or the fact that Meghan was, again, speaking about uh, experiences whilst in the royal family and the complaints that she had about the institution and not their unwillingness to help her at the time, you know, that is absolutely up to her to speak about it. And she spoke about it at the time. Uh, which again seems like a very long time ago that in, in uh, their interview to, to Oprah Winfrey and she she hasn't really touched upon it I don't think beforehand and so this does seem like a good opportunity to say you know these are these are very real feelings and when somebody is going through that why wouldn't we try and help um, these poor poor parents to try and um, highlight the case of not not to allow that to happen again no I thought it was really interesting what Megan said to me it felt like she went sort of a little bit further talking about feeling that way and making those plans and that and the not being believed when you sort of talk about it afterwards as well I guess so I thought that was quite um I guess raw again in a lot of ways it was very very raw and I thought that she she handled it very well I mean yeah, I, again, I, I talk about her presentation at him being an actress, and I do think that, that she would have had to think about how to um, address this very, very sensitive and emotive subject. So I, I don't think it was, you know, Jane Pauley saying, I've made you uncomfortable. I can see my questions made you uncomfortable because she would have known it was coming and she would have been briefed on it. But she, you have to give a measured response to that because the... The, the way that she told the story previously had been poured over in such um, such detail that she she has to almost not take the spotlight away from this cause because the, the Oprah Winfrey interview was all about them and it was all about getting their grievances off the chest and they knew it would be absolute blockbuster go around the world. We're all still talking about it years later. But again, this is um, they, they could be acu- accused of ambushing this very, very laudable project that Archwell is partnering with. So um so I can I can understand why why she approached it and um and it and it was was dealt with sensitively. And I think um one of the things I think be interesting for this organization is whether it is sort of inward facing and it is is it about being a support network for those parents who have lost a child or and to what extent can it be outward facing and raising that awareness and providing change? Because they're two quite different spaces and quite Quite yeah, different and, and again, what are, what are the goals of this project? Um, I think that that again is a, is a, a criticism labelled at Harry and Meghan that that what are the objectives, but what are the results, and whether there have been many results seen in the work that they've been doing. They, they, they may pop up at a at a, a soup kitchen in LA, or they might pop into a school. Or, but what are the what are the the actual um, things that we're seeing and what are the benefits being felt by these groups and it'll be interesting to, to follow that this if they are doing these partnerships now um how are these individual organizations going to benefit so yeah so well a worthy endeavor and we will look forward to seeing how it evolves and i think you know over the last week we have seen the damage that can be done via social media so you know uh, the uk has been there's been some riots going on. Yeah, um, 
yeah. inflamed in rhetoric and um, misinformation, and uh, it's it, it's a very damaging world. And I think yeah, back to Harry just for a second because he did say that there is a very um, there is an underbelly of society that operates online. And if you you know years ago he said back in the day you could have known what your children were accessing the TV that were they watching what they were reading, whereas they could be sitting in the next room to you and accessing a totally different world and going down a rabbit hole and it seems that though the conspiracy theories which we've seen this year of course in absolute spades because of the conspiracy theories that were raging about the princess of wales's health and where she was and what procedures she'd had done um and then that led to you know uh, the um accessing or the alleged accessing of her personal data i mean it just absolutely spy spirals doesn't it and so when you're seeing what is happening in the uk at the moment although last night we were recording on thursday um last night there was huge huge um turnouts of communities all over the uk to counteract these demonstrations that have been fueled yeah. online but it has been um it's been a lot of unsetting upsetting scenes and of course this is on the back of um the tragic murders of three young schoolgirls in uh, Southport in Merseyside in the north of England who uh three girl girls three schoolgirls were stabbed to death at a Taylor Swift um dance class and i mean and then and then this rhetoric that was poured onto online of whether it was an illegal immigrant that had come over to the UK and um, and it's all been proved to be utter nonsense. And I think we operate in a very very dangerous world a lot of the time, and uh, it's very very difficult hard, hard to protect yourself, let alone your children. Yeah, there the were sort of pretty moving statements from both the king and queen, and from the well from the king saying, "My wife and I have been profoundly shocked to hear of the utterly horrific incident in Southport today. We send our most heartfelt condolences, prayers, and deepest sympathies to the families and loved ones of those who have so tragically lost their lives, and to all affected." by this truly appalling attack and then William and Kate they sent their own message as well saying as parents we cannot begin to imagine what the families friends and loved ones of those killed and injured in Southport today are going through we send our love thoughts and prayers to all those involved in this horrid and heinous attack thank you also to the emergency responders who despite being met with the most horrific scenes demonstrated compassion and professionalism when your community needed you most and it it must have felt quite um close to home in some ways for William and Kate you know the kids had been off to see Taylor Swift with William mm, mm. you know you could imagine Charlotte going mm. to that kind of thing with her friends yeah, you know yeah. summer holidays go to a of that, that sort of age. dance party but so that those were the statements after the after the murders there is a teenager who has been charged and has made an initial court appearance um and then there's all there's been all of this sort of rioting that has happened in various places and sort of civil unrest going on which hopefully hopefully has calmed down but I mean are you surprised in some ways that they haven't either visited Southport and the community that that someone hasn't sort of engaged directly because you think about after the I mean it's to us you could say it's not on the same scale you know that Dunblane there was a, a gunman went into a school and shot I think it was 12 children and and shot himself or you've got the Grenfell fire was a huge number of people died um and but in some ways the sort of I don't know the the societal shock and to the hearts of people the kind of story the way that it was a you know a targeted attack on a young primary school mm. children and the way that that shakes a community and it shakes how you feel about you know your world are you surprised that the royals haven't visited yet or is it is, is that not what you would expect i think i them? think things are very very raw on the ground of course this is um let's take it i mean the, the the riots and disturbance and disorder has been a very fast moving series of events that is still being monitored you know we was told from um from royal sources yesterday that the king is receiving daily updates on that there may be some um, action and further statements down the line but if you take the the incident in southport very very raw a community in absolute mourning i mean you've read some of our local coverage um and it's been absolutely heartbreaking to see what is going on i th- i think there was a, a again a still a live investigation ongoing is it right for the royal family to to go up there whilst the tensions are still very very high not only in that area but across the across the country as well 
I think perhaps the the royal family will visit um, community groups up there in in some form at some time. It's just it does seem um, quite a difficult issue to contend with at the moment. I think when when feelings are running so high as they have been, perhaps they are better left to um, to see how things transpire. Because we've got this sort of uh, this disconnect because you've got the riots and the protests going on at home. And then you've got joy and excitement at the Olympics. Yeah, and, you, you yeah, know, it's... you've got Sophie cheering, cheering on the women's British, British women's sprint cycling team to their world record. And the eagle-eyed spotter spotted that she had one of the friendship bracelets as well. Have you got a friendship bracelet yet, Russell? I have actually. My daughter bought me one. Oh. We, we have matching ones. Oh, and I'm not wearing it cute. today because I didn't want to wear it in the shower. I will tell but, her. Yeah. Well, he's not fine. wearing it. He's not your friend <laughs> anymore. Now you're not on holiday. <laughs> But, um, you know, is that the rules then? You just you can't ever take it off. Well, probably. No, it gets a bit ratty. It's tough. Then. Try to sneak in the house. The no, so, I mean, Sophie looks like she's been having a great time. Been a, she's a patron of the hockey, so she's been to a bit of that. And um, we've seen Anne. Anne Anne's been getting about. She because she was at the swimming. She was presented Adam Peaty with his silver medal. So last week, Russell. Oh, oh sorry. She said she's doing the athletics she now. Horses been, as well. She's at the athletics. Been to see the athletics. Not a bad gig, is it? Well, been to been to see them before and as well. Gosh, she, not she, a bad gig. And she gets to dish out the medals as well. Like she is, she is part of of the Olympic, you know, association, essentially. So The vibe. I mean, yeah, she's she works hard, oh, she's but she's Olympian, getting the best job as well. So. Tickets, you? But I think, oh, to that point as well, you know, I was talking to someone at the Palace yesterday and they said, listen, it's very, it, we, we were talking about statements and visits and they said, listen, the, the, the royal families, um, part of their role in, in troubled time is, is to continue to offer uh, reassurance and that stability by continuing with with their work and and that may involve things as I discuss happening in the, in the future but um we've seen the king was doing some engagements in Scotland yesterday we've seen of course members of the royal family representing team GB and the Olympic spirit in Paris as well um and you know, we we just have to we have to wait and to see what what happens again it's a very very emotional time is it, at the moment you can tell it's summer when charles is wearing a kilt i mean that's how it works isn't it <laughs> and the, that picture of the little girls doing their dancing at the may games that's on the uh, palace social media piece, like they they're really giving it some well it's just like it's great i love it um other bits and pieces a couple of things that uh, have happened in our in our absence charles met zelensky yes president zelensky which is you know sort of an ongoing as we've spoken about a number of times, the royal family's commitment to Ukraine. And so I thought that was really interesting and um, very public statement, the biggest statement essentially you can get of ongoing support there when there was the meeting of European leaders in Blenheim Palace. And even more excitingly, the first King Charles post box. Oh, yes. I mean, I can't believe we missed this at the time, what with our obsession with post boxes, but I think it's, I think it's in Cornwall. Oh, well, it's in Camborne. I think yeah, I might have to go to I know, exactly. Down. I know, I know. So that's I a, that's an excuse down. for a pod save the king uh, foreign trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Foreign trip. Get, out, get us out of the office. Um, it hasn't, well, it, it pretty much has wrapped up for the for the summer for the Royals, but William has got a an exhibition related to homelessness, which is, is yes. homeless project. Yes, I know that this has been widely trailed over the last few weeks, but um, in conjunction with his, uh, the latest stage of the five-year Homewards project, his laudable programme to, to try and end homelessness in the UK. Um, and there is an ITV documentary, a two-part, going to be uh, aired in the autumn. Um, this is going to be a, uh, a get, well, it is, it's happening. It's, it's opened already. It's going to, it's an um, exhibition at the Saatchi Gallery in London. It's called Homelessness Reframed. The exhibition opened uh, this week. And uh, what I liked, actually, which one of my um, compadres at, uh, at the Telegraph picked out, which was uh, the visitors to the art exhibition supported by the Prince of Wales um, are, you know, um, asked to overturn stereotypes about homelessness uh, and they can buy mobile phone top-ups and travel cards to help people at risk of losing their home. So on your way to the gift shop, you don't have to pick up the sort of tap that they're selling those plastic dinosaurs when you're shepherding your children out of the natural history museum <laughs> wherever you've been the kennedy space museum you can uh, you can actually do something worthwhile and i think that that's a, a fantastic mode of what he's trying to do is trying to try to change perceptions and a lot of these stories are about people who face homelessness and uh, and the exhibition really gets that that across i'm um, i'm looking forward to 
to uh, to going popping down there over the summer. I think it's interesting as well. I mean, obviously there is a long-standing centuries tradition of royals and art, but we've seen more recently, you know, Kate doing her public exhibitions with the, um, what was it called? The, the one that she did during COVID, the, getting the people to take their pictures Hold with the National still. Portrait. Hold still. Um, and, you know, that being up on billboards and things. And then the King commissioning the Windrush portraits and that... It's interesting to see that connection between art and society and the royals continuing in the modern times and the power of all of that. It's not just about what's on your phone and the uh, and the social media side of things. Um, but William and Kate, they're off up to Balmoral with the kids. Which yeah, well, is this, this is thing. turn up for the books, isn't it? Because um, it will be the furthest that uh, Princess of Wales has travelled over the last few months. She's been keeping it very, very close to home. Of course, she's still re- recovering or re- receiving her cancer treatment. And will be for for several weeks, possibly months. Um, but I think that this is very good news because you know you need to be able to uh, have some time with your family to have enjoyable things to look forward to. And we know that the royal family like getting together at Balmoral. So over the course of the summer holidays, the Waleses will be with their children and um, and with Grandpa Wales. And that seems uh, so. You know, the 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 order of the day up there is very very much sort of stripping back. The, the job and just being part of the family. So um, so hopefully that will be a, uh, a good occasion for them. Very wholesome and outdoors yeah. and just the kind of thing that, as Kate said, she has been really appreciating while she has been having her treatment. Well, I think it's time for us to have a little summer break as well. We're not off to Balmoral. No. We're, in fact, we're supposed to work here. We've had our holidays already, but we are, we're going to yeah, yeah. take a but listen, ooh, focus, it's, make it's, some plans. I think so. You know, it's, there's a lot to look forward to because we've got um, we've got a big tours coming up. We've obviously, we've got uh, the King and Queen's trip down under and the Commonwealth has a government at Samoa. And then we've got Prince William going over to Cape Town as well in the autumn. Russell's so. spending the next few weeks polishing his passport. <laughs> well, for his adventures. Next few weeks apologising to my wife, I imagine, because <laughs> I won't be doing much childcare. But you know, it's a there is. A, I think there's going to be an awful lot to look forward to. There is um, hopefully a renewed sense of um, hope and purpose for the royal family. It's been such a tumultuous time over the the, you know, the first six, seven, eight months of this year. So hopefully, after the summer break, um, the king will be feeling uh, slightly more rested. He will be looking forward to, to going to Australia. Of course, the Commonwealth Government meeting is a big, big deal for him as well. And then, and then um, a shot following close behind. Well, I should look forward to covering all of that with you as well, Russell. Absolutely. Although I will not be polishing up my passport. Russell is the one that gets, gets to go on the jet. <laughs> well, I know my place. I know um, my place. Well, listeners, it's been lovely to, well, over the last however long it has been, be chatting with you. We always enjoy it every week and we'll look forward to returning in September time, I mean, obviously, if anything gets really exciting we'll in between back. times, we'll We're just around. we'll just come in just for a Put special the bat signal up. Yep, <laughs> pod say the king signal out in the skies over London. Russell, come in, ready to record. Uh, listeners, do take care. Have a fabulous summer, and until next time, pod save the king. <laughs> <laughs>